Hello. Today we're demonstrating how to work the Strictly Medicinal Tincture Press and press out a, a tincture. This will give you a feel for the appropriate technique on how to press out a macerating tincture. So we have our uh, goldenrod macerating tincture from last year and we're going to press it out into a pure herbal tincture. This is the Strictly Medicinal uh, Tincture Press, which is at this point in full upright uh, pressed position. And we're going to turn this little hand to operate a toggle to the left, and that will bring the press down. And now I'm going to turn the, the toggle to the right again, which will lock the jack so that we can bring the press up. The first thing I would like to uh, show you are the different parts of the press. Uh, this is the H frame, which is built out of very sturdy steel and uh, is completely unbreakable. This is the uh, six ton jack. These are the springs which bring down the platen. This is the extender block which will uh, help painlessly raise the uh, uh, pressing pan without uh, extra jacking action. This is the outer pan with the uh, little spout on it. This is the Tigon tubing, which is a non-reactive uh, beverage type tubing, which is a uh, uh, very useful for tincture pressing. This is the uh, little cap that goes on the receiving vessel. So you need to have a receiving vessel. This is a, a wide mouth mason jar. Inside the outer pan, we have the perforated cylinder, which is uh, custom made by us. Uh, this is all stainless steel. All the tincture uh, contact surfaces are 100% stainless steel. The, the perforated cylinder consists of two parts. The cylinder itself and a uh, custom turned mirror finish base. These can be married together by pressing in this manner. And uh, it's, it's nice that they come apart because if you ever get uh, uh, the pressing cloth stuck inside there, then you can just take it apart and unstick it very easily. This is the plunger, which is uh, hand turned on, in our steel shop. Again, mirror finish stainless steel. The uh, way to press a tincture is simply to put the perforated cylinder inside the outer pan, then use a pressing bag, which is sewn by my beautiful wife, Mage, on her little sewing machine. And this is made out of a polypropylene pressing cloth, which is non-reactive and is very difficult to uh, uh, damage. Then it holds up to very high pressure, which is what's going to occur when we put the tincture under pressure in the press. So we, we uh, put the bag, fold the bag over the edges in this manner, and then kind of give your macerating tincture a bit of a stir, and then introduce it into the bag. And a lot of times it helps to actually use your hand and push in and help break up the mark a little bit as it's introduced into the pan. Plop, plop, plop. This is the way it always is when you're pressing a tincture. The um, pan itself will hold half a gallon of macerating tincture. And what I'm noticing here is that the uh, liquid is already beginning to fill my tube. And so it's high time that I adhere the receiving container to the tube. 
So we'll do that, and that will receive the liquid. I'm going to push this mark down in a little bit more because it looks to me like I'll probably be able to do everything in one pressing, which is always nice. And if you have a lot of mark in your tincture, that's always good because it takes up space and it means that you have to press less far to push out all of the tincture. But the press will take from a half a gallon down to a very small amount, even an experimental amount of tincture. And so it's very useful for uh, uh, lab technique where you're uh, 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 testing small lots of herb and it's also very useful for production purposes where you're looking at producing larger quantities of tincture. So now we'll raise this up like so and we'll place the pan on the platen and get everything lined up properly. We'll make sure that the jack is engaged by turning the toggle to the right. And then we'll simply raise the platen, making sure that the perforated pan is doing its work and the tincture is flowing. And in fact, we filled our first jar. And so I'll remove this, keep the hose above the level of the tincture, insert a new jar, cover this one. This is, these, are the, these are the goods. And keep pressing. Note how the base is very heavy, and so I don't really need to hold the press while I'm, while I'm jacking it up, although uh, sometimes it makes sense to you know, solidify the whole press by holding your hand on this uh, uh, upper horizontal piece and then jacking. And you can see we're pressing out a great deal of liquid at this point. In fact, it's going to exceed the capacity of our receiving container. So now, as a failsafe, I simply bring it down and we're not getting any more liquid production. Then, take this and free up another container. Now, at this point, it might make sense to use our block because that will give us a little bit more lift. And so I'll put the block in, like so. See how that saves a lot of jacking because now we're way up almost to the top of the stroke of the jack. And during the latter phases of the pressing, the uh, liquid gets more and more, more dark. And you get out a lot of the um, extractives from the herb that normally you wouldn't be able to get through hand squeezing. So this is one of the advantages of using the hydraulic press, besides the fact that you're getting much more yield when you uh, put it under, under this much pressure. And I'm not having to exert a great deal of force while I'm doing this because the jack is doing the work. While I'm jacking, then the, the uh, remaining mark that's being squeezed inside here is yielding. It's yielding out more liquid. So if I wait for a moment like that, and then I jack again, then I take up that difference and uh, more liquid will be produced.
So it is a, uh, in the latter part of the pressing cycle, it is really best to press up a little bit and then wait for a few moments and then press again. That way you get optimal yield. It's really about that simple. At this point, uh, the majority of the liquid has been pressed out of the mark. We can, again, bring the, the uh, plate down by turning the toggle. We can remove the pressing block. Take down the pans. And oftentimes what makes sense at this point is to actually remove the uh, pressing cloth and here's the, here's the uh, mark that's inside. That's the golden, goldenrod leaf and flower that's now been uh, largely divested of liquid. But uh, in many cases, you'll have an herb that holds on to quite a bit of liquid. And so you can repack at this point. And by, by uh, repacking, what I mean is kind of free up the mark, the press cake as it were, break it up by hand, then reintroduce it to the system, fold over the top again, and then simply repress to finish. That is the uh, gist of the of the system, and what we'll get is a uh, high-grade product that is uh, of highest purity and best strength. The value of this kind of a system is not only in producing a higher-grade tincture, but also in saving uh, money from the alcohol that's used and from the uh, value of the herb. Uh, you can soon make your money back by using a high grade tincture press uh, versus hand squeezing just in terms of the amount of uh, extra tincture which is produced in the process. So I highly recommend this uh, laboratory grade press it's made to exacting specifications by a very um, talented team and uh, uh, locally grown uh, herbal aficionados, and it will um, produce a great deal of satisfaction. Thank you.